Okay, so here's the basic thing. We are going live to answer Social Security Disability Insurance questions and Supplemental Security Income questions. Two SSA programs usually used for disability benefits, right? So if you become disabled, you look at SSI, if it's a poverty situation, you haven't paid in that much, or SSDI. Now, there are some rules that we've got to follow here. Number one, no story mode. No story mode. No story mode. Number two, you get about five to seven minutes per question. Number three, have your legal question ready to roll. Have it in the chamber. Have it ready to just launch onto the phone. With that said, the phone number that you dial is 407-279-1754. Again, 407-279-1754. Okay, okay. So let's get into this. What do we do here? We get questions from people who already have attorneys, don't have attorneys, have non-legal reps, have you know, basically the most weird thing that has happened to them. And then we figure out together a solution for this individual. And the way we do it is by basically thinking about what they've done, what they intend to accomplish. And then we go through all of our knowledge and we get them to exactly where we want them to be to have a successful outcome. Now, with that said, if you need more than five to seven minutes for me to walk you to a solution, Right. If you have an upcoming hearing and you need to run hearing questions, if you're transitioning out of the work environment and want to know what your options are, what benefits, what programs, what things to do, how to timeline it, timeline it out. If you have a CDR coming up and you're wondering, okay, what do I put on this form? You know, are there CDI investigators following me? Stuff like that. You can always buy an hour of time. Okay, we have that option. It's in the bio. It's two fifty per hour. We put you on the docket calendar with the other hearings. You get an hour. Now, with that said. I haven't been doing a lot of this on Facebook. I intend to start loading these onto Facebook. I've just been super duper busy with a lot of things at the moment. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up the phone at this point. You guys know the phone number. I understand it's super late. It's 11.26 p.m. on a Tuesday night. This is the phone number that you go ahead and call. I'm going to put it out there. And then shortly, I'm sure it'll start ringing because it always starts to always ring. We will go from there. All right, let's go ahead and get the phone ready. Let's prep it. Get the thing with the face ID going. And perfect. Okay, good. And now we wait for the first caller. Here we go. Which is weird because normally we never have to wait. So let's see. Oh, this is so weird. Normally we like, normally it's like, we just hit it. We hit it hard. We're like, oh, first question. Boom. My journey told me this. Ah, right? That's that's normally how it goes. Howdy from PA. Uh, Laura uh, uh, Chrisman. Howdy, howdy. I used to actually go to school in PA all the time. I went to Moravian Academy, a very blue blazery school. Uh, I lived growing up right next to PA. I lived right next to uh, Easton, which was in Phillipsburg and Harmony area. Um, Linda Soto asked, how can you function without sleep? Poorly. I'm actually uh, one of those individuals that when I get a lot of sleep, I actually get kind of grumpy and mean because everybody talks at a much slower pace than my brain wants to go. So when I don't sleep, I'm actually just a more relaxed, chill person. So that's one of my secrets. Like if I get a lot of sleep, I turn into a grumpy bear. So um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Euphoric Concepts. I don't recall ever downing Walter's business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do a video for the blind. I could. Yeah, I could totally do blind listing, walk through what's required, all that stuff. No problem. Uh, let's see. Howdy, everybody. Howdy, Diana Fernandez, who also gets the blue ribbon. She was the first to go ahead and comment. So what I'm going to do is. Normally, there this phone is ringing off the hook. It's not. I might get an early night because remember Wednesdays I go work with the homeless, so I gotta wake up early and I gotta drive across two counties basically to get to the location. Um, I see there uh, somebody used to live right next to where Easton is, uh, or actually they used to live in Easton. I used to drive through Easton almost every single day growing up. Um, you know, I basically. And everything was beyond Easton for the most part. Like where I lived in New Jersey was just total farmland. But, oh, here's the first caller. Here we go. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Not. Remember to mute the computer on your side. Uh, remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Uh, what is your legal question? Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, Attorney Walter. Um, I was going to ask, um, I went through a long, a long uh, one-year um CDR and um, finally it came back that I was a, my disability is still ongoing. Okay. Uh, but the um, I'm still being um, there's a high level of still of like investigation and CDI units 
I tried to wash some clothes down the road. It was about a mile and a half away. Okay. And um, they were waiting on. Well, they know my. They sort of know in the past where I where I would where I would go on Sunday to wash clothes. Okay. And so stuff like that. But um, after you're approved, uh, and you're still getting pursued pretty heavily by investigators, um, the sheriffs, the sheriff of, or sorry, the sheriffs have finally back down to I'm not getting them like I was getting them for a pretty long time. Okay. They were doing a lot of the work, but um, once you're approved and you're still being investigated, how long do do you normally have to wait before you're sort of in, really in the clear? Like you can officially say, okay, my records came back. They all were confirmed, checked out. I'm still being invest heavily investigated by CDI units. Um, do you know when you can say everything's good, the coast is clear, uh, and and go back to normal life? Well, I mean, they can always continue to investigate you, so it's never one of those situations where it de facto ends. But the bottom line is this: like once you complete a CDR review, they likely have moved beyond your claim at that point, and they may come back to it in a year, they might come back to it in three years, but. You know, usually at that point, they've moved past you. So if you're seeing police cars, sheriff cars, you know, stuff like that, or, you know, vans that look like there might be somebody that's actually filming, it doesn't always mean an attachment to you. It might just be they're doing something else. So um, I would say at this point, likely you, you, you've gotten to the point where they're no longer investigating you and you're just kind of seeing cop cars at locations that you go to. Okay. And um, after an approval, if they... If they uh, if they can appeal the decision by DDS, does that normally happen within the first month or the first month or two months before they would try to appeal a decision? And which I think that would I don't know I think that's pretty uh, I don't know what the percentage of that happening to people it very might be low very low yeah very low okay. If they were going to try to appeal a decision, would it be like within a month or two months they would send me something in the mail? So you get something in the mail, um, it, it, and usually it's, uh, you know, like appeals counsel could jump down and say, hey, yada, yada. But, you know, if you're worried about a true investigation, you know, I know from prior conversations that we've had over the phone, you just don't really get out that much. So they're not going to catch you doing a lot of the things that would traditionally be, you know, caught by people. You know, remember, they're catching people going to bars, dancing on tables, going jet skiing, going, you know, riding horses, you know, here, here, here and here. So, I mean, to be fair, to be very direct, you just don't live the lifestyle that they're looking for to go ahead and say, gotcha. You know, so in this instance, I don't think they're investigating you at this point. I mean, they're just they're not lining up very likely to go ahead and go after you. And, you know, the bottom line is that. You're, you may see police, you may see sheriffs, they may stop, but that's all part of the gig. They do that all the time, you know? Yes, sir. I uh, appreciate it, Walter. I filled out the Freedom of Information Act and in December, and they came back, and they said that uh, the guy there might have misunderstood me just a little bit when I told him I was wanting to see if a warrant was obtained. Mm-hmm. Um, to see if they had the ability to put tracking devices on, like, uh, the cars I would drive, which is like a, a relative's car. In my car, I'm having trouble with my car, but one sure. of the cylinders in the engine is not working right. But um, they came back and said that um, he told me to refile with the Freedom of Information Act and go back to the same steps. He said, uh, go to... Um, uh, let's see, I got it written down. Make this quick public dot uh, liaison dot or dot gov mm-hmm. or f o i a dot public dot liaison dot gov and refile. And then um, he said, and or go to the local Social Security Administration and um, told me to give certain information to them plus the uh, the response to the email and the letter they sent me. Sure. But I really don't want to go down to the local field office after all I've been through with a year of really heavy investigation stuff. I don't know if that would be really wise for me to walk into that local field office and hand them that and, to, and give them information saying, want to know if there was still an ongoing uh, 
uh, OIJ or OIG investigation on me. I mean, the other side um, of the coin is, I mean, you can do that, but I just don't, I don't think that they're beginning the process of really looking into you. I just don't see it as realistically something that they're continuing forward with. Um, you can always check to check and see what they say, but um, I would say this. I, I feel like for the most part, you're in the free and clear at this point, but I want to go to the next caller real quick, good sir, because we kind of hit that six minute mark. I will catch you a little yes, bit sir. later, but you can always give me a call and we can check in later down the line. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Walter. Absolutely. Good, sir. You have a wonderful, wonderful night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Good, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Excellent. So, um, so basically when it comes to his particular type of situation, uh, there's all, you know, when people get investigated and people are, you know, basically under the review process by investigators, it can be a very, very traumatic thing because as a disabled person, you're like, Hey, I'm disabled. And when investigators come around, it's like, are you really, are you really though? So we're going to go ahead and take the next caller. Uh, that's basically calling in. If not, we'll go ahead and take one of the people who already called in. Let me go ahead and see if this phone's going to ring. I realize it's super late. I know it's 1135 PM. Uh, so let me go ahead. I'm going to put the phone number in there real quick. I know we missed about, uh, five or six calls right there. Let me go ahead. Um, let me go back to those who already called in. Um, and then basically go from there. Let's go with this one, boop, right here, and call, and there we go. All right, let's see if we can get this person on the phone real quick. One second room. Hello. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. We are live on YouTube. Remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Uh, you get about five to seven minutes to answer a question. What is your legal question? Go ahead. Well, I have a, I'm under review for SSI, okay. and it's about 43%, and they said that it should be done by October. I was wondering, is there any way I can speed line the process, streamline it? And also, at this point, I need to file for bankruptcy, I think, and what shall I do for that when I don't have can't hire an attorney? So I can't really go through the bankruptcy situation because that's just not the type of law I do. Um, but what I would say is this, uh, for the SSI, when did you actually file for SSI benefits? Um, it's been last year. So about a year. Okay. So basically, um, you want to find that date and then count about 17 months from that date going forward. Uh, and that's when you'll likely get a decision. The ways that you, that you can speed it up, the statute you want to go look up is I dash two dash one dash 40. So if you type into Google, SSA I dash two dash one dash 40, uh, you'll get basically the ways in most part that they are able to go ahead and expedite a claim. And just to give you a quick summary, those are for terminal illness claims, compassion allowance listing claims, wounded warriors, <clears throat> uh, for hundred percent PNT veterans, uh, suicidal, homicidal, and dire need people. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. You have a wonderful, wonderful night. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take the next caller. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the next one right here. Here's one right here. Perfect. Let's get this one rolling. Excellent. We'll get the speaker on. Here we go. It's ringing. Very good. Let's see if we can get this person on the phone. It's the double ring. Will we see three rings? We will see three rings. All right, let's see what we got here. Come on. Well, we see four rings. Okay, I'm going to cut that one off. We're going to scooch to the next one. Uh, the next one is this one. Boop. There we go. Let's go on to speaker. I know it's late. It's 11.37 p.m. Like, I'll literally do this video and go straight to sleep and then wake up super early. Oh, goodness. Are we going to get, uh, are we going to get two rings? Nice. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. We are live on YouTube. Remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Um, what is your legal question? Go ahead. Sure. My Okay, so I've been on disability um, for almost a year now for, um, for a surgery I had on my knee. Okay. And um, my question is, it's going to end June 7th, and it's looking like my knee's not going to heal, and I've already, I'm on a cane for my back. And I'm limited with my shoulders, 20 pounds. So my question is, when should I file? When should I? I looked up online and it says there's a date. Um, I can either file online or I can set up an appointment. But when should I uh, initiate that? Tonight. 
tonight would be the best way to do it. If you don't have an attorney to read through the paperwork and make sure your answers are good and strong and correct, file tonight. Literally go onto Google, type in SSA disability filing, find the .gov website, file tonight. Yeah, I already, I already got the uh, paperwork. You know, I already went on the site because I'm already, you know, I already get disability already. So it's just like, hey, you want to know about permanent disability or whatever we can do? So I, I, I printed out that paperwork. I looked through it. It's, you know, st I'm, I'm seeing four different doctors, and I'm in the disability under two, but it's going to run out in a year, you know, and I can't go back to work because I'm a stagehand, and we lift from thirty to hundred pounds. So oh, easily. I'm out, and I'm fifty nine years old. Yeah, so I mean, I'm 59. I've been doing it all my life as a union member here in LA. So I got um, three years before I can actually, you know, be an actual um, uh, retirement. Mm -hmm. Really, at sure. 62, but I, I can't work. I, I'm on a cane. I can't do nothing. So, so you're saying just go ahead and file that paperwork now? Yeah, get your SSDI application in immediately. Okay, so since I got a couple of more minutes, hopefully here, what about like all my MRIs and CDs? I got so much stuff because I've been in motorcycle accidents too. True. Um, so I'm pr I'm pretty damaged. Mm -hmm. So what do I do with all that? So basically, what will happen is the SSA will use what's called an A27 HIPAA to go ahead and request your medical documentation going forward. And so when they do that, uh, this will go ahead and go into what's called the ERE and the Electronics Records Express. They'll put it into the F folder, and then when they get time, they'll go ahead and organize it from there, um, you know, so that basically, you know, they have everything ready to go and everything is, you know, timelined out and exhibited. So, you know, they, they have a process, they have a plan, they do all this stuff. Um, bottom line is this, uh, however, um, you know, you need to file immediately because I'm assuming you're on you're on workers' comp or LTD benefits, right? Yeah, I'm on workers' comp. Um, workers' compensation. I guess that's what I am. I'm I'm not through my work because I'm a uh, we, I'm a stagehand, so it's like we're daily hires. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, so I'm incapable of working, so I go through I go through my medical that I'm get through my union and go, hey, I'm so messed up. Oh yeah, you are. Go have an MRI. Oh my god, go see the specialist. Oh, now you need surgery. Right. That type of thing. Right. So uh, basically, uh, my suggestion with this whole situation is apply tonight, get it rolling, no excuses, make it happen. Um, and then if you have questions, call an attorney. Um, doesn't have to be me, it can be anybody, but call them, ask the questions, get the ball rolling. Okay, no, no, it's you that I call. I mean, I really yeah. appreciate everything you do. for you're, you're so patient, dude. People yeah. are so paranoid sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 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 no but, Yeah, you're super patient and awesome, and I like what you're doing. So, yeah, I, and for 250 bucks for your time and whatever you time and effort, so well worth it. So let me figure out where I'm at, and that helps me. I'm glad I finally got the will to call you. And, yeah. Because um, I watch you so much. So, awesome. Um, I think that's covered it for me for right now, right? Excellent, good sir. Sounds good. Um, and then any questions, you, you can always reach out to me in the future. We can just catch up. Um, but have a wonderful, wonderful night and um, get it rolling. And if you run into a snag, just catch up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You have a good night. You too, good sir. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, so uh, with that said, when is it a good time to apply for SSDI benefits? Well, because it takes forever for them to adjudicate it now. Immediately. Yesterday would have been good. Here we go. Next call. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. We are live on YouTube. I remember to use a fake name throughout this process. What is your legal question? Go ahead. Hello, this is Scary Spice. Wait, did you say Scary Spice? It is, yeah. That is the best name of the um, night. That's the best right there. <laughs> so good. Thank you. Thank Indeed, you. yeah. <laughs> um, I just had a quick question for you. I just can't seem to find it anywhere. Um, sure. I'm a concurrent claim, okay. and on CDR, they they didn't know it was a CDR, didn't do the paperwork, okay. and they just kept going on a Title II only. Do I have any grounds on that? So they're doing a CDR for SSDI Title II only on a concurrent allowance. Uh, I'm assuming the other program is SSI? Yes, I've been on there since uh, 2013, but I've been on disab dis disabled as a disabled child uh, since 89. So... Um, I like mean, we spoke before, so. they're not required mm -hmm. to do a CDR for both programs. They can do a CDR for just one program, but they usually do a CDR okay. for both programs. 
Um, and what's interesting is that okay. with the SSI SSDI combo, usually they do a CDR mm -hmm. for medical purposes. And the reality is that the mm -hmm. medical, you know, system, the, the, the standard for being severely impaired is the same for SSDI as it is SSI. So in theory, they haven't really mm -hmm. screwed up here because they can just, you know, if they find that you're not disabled, they can apply it to the SSI okay. as well. So, but, oh, okay, okay. but the other thing is if they're only doing SSI, SSDI review, right, for regular disability benefits, mm -hmm. then the financial restrictions are much less aggressive and restrictive than like SSI benefits. Okay. So they're probably just looking into your claim file at this point for a medical review. And then if they need to, they can yeah. switch over to basically, you know, a situation where, you know, they, they can go ahead and go after the SSI. But as of right now, they're probably just doing a medical review. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I have one quick bonus question for you, because um, I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. I have to use a walker intermittently for more than three months. Okay. Is that like a mind thing? Like, would they start a mind diary for that? So, I mean, potentially. Do you? So wait. So wait. You're saying like the SSA would would do that, right? I cut out edema. No, did, wait. It cut out there. Wait. Say say it again. Um, well, I had a stroke in 21, and I have to use a walker intermittently, like about five to seven days a week, mm -hmm. give or take. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have bipedal edema, which gets really swollen after about an hour and a half sure. with a combination of sitting and standing. Sure. So it's almost like a textbook. I was just wondering if that would apply, like they would start a mind diary, even though I'm not 50 in the grid rules. So, I mean, in that situation, they're doing an eight-step sequential process. So the first thing they're going to check out is, have you gotten better with any of your current regular impairments that you had previously? And if you haven't, then they transition over to basically, okay, this guy hasn't gotten better, he's still disabled. Or he has gotten better, and these particular impairments are no longer severe. Then they ask, hmm, since he's gotten better, are there any other impairments that limit him to the point where he can't do functional tasks? And once they go through okay. that, and I mean, if you if you have all of those going on, you're definitely going to stay and remain on disability benefits because those are more severe than probably the original impairments that they reviewed. Oddly enough, you would think so, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're about equal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I I absorb things like a sponge, but I can't do anything with it. You know, I, I'd love yeah. to go back to work, but you know, but uh, I, I really appreciate your time. Um, yeah. those are questions that I just couldn't find. Yeah, absolutely, good sir. It's because it's not there. Okay. Well, I will talk to you later. Perfect, sir. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for what I really, really wanted. Thank you, sir. Thank All you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, just to give a little time check, guys, we are at 22 minutes. We're going to be shooting for around 45 minutes. We will wait for the next caller to call in. I'll look over to the uh, chat section, see if there are any calls over here or any questions over here. Uh, that I can go ahead and answer in the meantime. Let's see what we got. I'm not seeing questions. I'm seeing some talking back and forth. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so if you have any questions in the comment section, uh, God, this chair is going to break. I can feel it. Like I just, I felt it squeak, and it's just, I have to swap. Like next time I go live, I have to swap out this chair because I just have to literally tighten up all the screws on it. Uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Any questions at all? Uh, was born to terms of the age. So guys, remember too, when you put in the chat area, like a question, make sure you put an exclamation or a question mark at the end of it. Otherwise I don't know it's a question. Hold on. Let me see real quick. Uh, VE question, uh, from Gary, uh, howdy. Uh, what is the, Oh, we're getting another call. Hold on. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott, Disability Resolution PA. How can I help you? Oh, also remember, use a fake name for this process. And what is your legal question? Hi, I actually have a couple small questions, I think. Sure. I, um, my, you can call me Tom. Um, I have several issues going on, major depressive disorder, general anxiety disorder, ADHD, and PTSD. They're all diagnosed as such. I have a firm representing me, but I'm not really hearing much from them. I had initially filed a suit, it, or not filed a suit, but filed for disability. I got declined. Um, it apparently was close. I was told by the lady who was handling it that even her manager who was on the review board thought I should get it. So apparently somebody thought I should, somebody thought I shouldn't. I didn't. Um, I'm going through the appeal process now, first appeal. And I'm really not hearing a whole lot from the law firm. I don't know if I, 
you if there's anything I, I asked them if there's anything I could do to help my case or if yeah. I shouldn't do certain things. And uh, I'm really not getting much feedback at all. So I wanted to talk to you because you've certainly been a uh, uh, wealth of knowledge. I watch all your videos. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, here's kind of the basic thing when it comes to uh, law firms. Like, you know, you want to check in once a month always, you know, ask them what's the current status, what's going on, where are things going, you know, things like that. Um sure. You know, I have claimants where they'll text me, they'll be like, what's the status update? And then I'll call them four times, send them an email, shoot them a text, and they never get back to me for like two months later until they ask again, what's That's the status crazy. update? And, you know, for me, the big thing I always tell them is like, look, you know, once a month check in, but realize that it's 17 to 18 months for essentially a review process. So everything's really slowed down. The main things that your law firm should be doing is talking about with you about what the listing level criteria is, what auxiliary evidence would help your claim. Uh, and then basically, you know, looking at essentially your testimony in preparation for going in front of the uh, medical experts that the SSA is going to send you to. So, and there's other things too, obviously retention of forms, completion of forms, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, if your law firm is at the, you're at the recon step and you're not really able to go ahead and get a hold of them, I mean, you know, that's, that's tough. That's a direction problem. So one of the big things you would have to then look at is, okay, cool. If I can't get a hold of them, what are the things that I need to know? And I'll tell you right now, these are the things you need to know. Uh, number one, you need to know when you're going to be going back to those CEMEs, those doctors. You need to know what was in their reports that they originally you know, said about you after the initial filing, in which case they denied you. You need to know what you need to improve with your testimony going forward. You need to know what's in your medical evidence and why it's not looking so pretty and uh, why that is a, an absolute problem. So you need to go through all this stuff, kind of get it all rolling in the right direction, and then, you know, basically, you know, have a higher chance of likelihood of being approved. But if you can't get a hold of your attorney, and see, this happens with a lot of the disability firms, and I'll just, I'll just say the way it is. Disability firms, we don't get paid enough to really have that much interaction with the clients. That amount of payment is really just for them to prep the claim, make sure all the medical's in there, you know, write a brief if they need to, or write a brief after the hearing if the judge requests it. And then at that point, basically, sure. you know, do the hearing, close out the file, be done. So the thing is, sure. it's just disability law firms don't make enough to have continuous and repetitive contact. We do that at Disability Resolution, but I can tell you this, it's killing me. And a lot of the staff are like, yeah. when am I going to get more pay? What the hell? Yada, yada. So the viability of me continuing to have this much contact with the claimants is going to be reduced. It has to because of the financial problems. Now they've just raised the attorney's fees, yeah, to like ninety two hundred bucks, which will help. That will help with more people getting paid a little bit more. That'll keep people employed with the firm. But the problem is this entire field is evolving away from the lawyers being constantly evolved involved with the claims and only really being involved right before the hearing. So. I mean, here's, here's, okay. So I'll do one of the things to go ahead and work with you a little bit. Uh, so walk me through okay. wh which one out of all of your parents do you think is the most severe? Major, dis uh, major depression disorder. Okay. So, okay. Let me ask you this. When was the last time that you were overnight at a mental facility, such as a behavioral facility or a sanatorium? It's been, years that was when i was uh 18 or 19 i'm 56 currently okay so can you tell me this um are you working with a psychiatrist psychologist behavioralist or you know neuropsych or anything like that i see a psychiatrist every 28 days i see uh, two therapists one is with the county that i live in in northern virginia and the other is uh, uh just a person who works for a firm who's been nice enough to work with me um, I haven't worked in four years, um, and so I've been. It's been an ongoing issue, and I also have a case manager who uh, is a social worker who's been working with me, helping me out. I lost my house a year or two ago too because I get paralyzed and I don't do simple things that I should be doing. Things, e even if I receive a check and I can deposit it by phone, for whatever reason, I don't tend to take action on it. So I came within three weeks of having all my stuff dumped out on the street. My sister helped me get uh, a realtor and luckily I was able to sell it. And uh, I had some equity in the house. I lost a lot of money, but I had equity. So at least I was saved that way. But um, yeah, my day to day, I don't do much. Um, I, I basically survive. Um, my hygiene is horrible, much as it's embarrassing to say, but um, 
you know, those are some of the issues that I have. And I can elaborate if you want them. All right. So let me ask you this. You don't have transportation, I'm assuming, correct? Actually, I do have a car. I was able to pay off a car once I sold my house. Okay. So you have a car. Um, okay. So what kind of crisis medical treatment are you doing right now? Are you going to the emergency room? Explain to them the difficulties you're having. Are you crisis calling the mental facility uh, that's assisting you? Are you having freakouts in general public and the police are called? Like, where are we at with things like that? Actually, those things haven't happened. Um, I've been fortunate, well, blessed in the way I have an awesome daughter. But up until uh, six months ago, I was single daddy raising her. She's since gone off to college. But I was asked several times if I wanted to go into the inpatient and so they could get my medicines adjusted. Um, my medicines have been increased multiple times and certain things have been added to them. I take a whole litany of uh, meds for it. But basically, it's taking care of my daughter. I was very reluctant to go inpatient. Um, I've done it before. And as I said, when I was younger, and I wasn't a huge fan of it, I have some issues kind of with being told what to do, too, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I have not had any public freakouts. I do freak out, um, but nothing that would involve law enforcement or anything like that. If I'm getting stressed, I'll, I'll just leave and forget the errand I was doing. But I don't go out often. I try and go out only once a week for groceries. Um, and most of my appointments with my both my therapist, my psychiatrist, um, are all virtual, so I don't have to go out into the office there. And then my caseworker, we actually get together and we'll meet. She'll come to my home. Okay, so you live in a bubble, right? I do. Okay, as a result of this, you're not really collecting evidence that shows the severity of your impairments because you're always living in a bubble that's provided for, correct? For the most part, I do have letters. I don't know if they even mean anything or not from my therapist advocating that I definitely have the disabilities and that I should get payment, but I don't know what weight goes to a therapist's letter. Um, that was another question I had, but I have some pretty well detailed uh, letters advocating on my behest, um, stating that I do have issues that warranted one being for my therapist of four years and another for my case manager. And I believe the therapist I've been working with with CPT um, will testify the same. That being said, I don't know if those got any weight or not. Well, what level are they? Are they master's level providers? Like, where are they on the spectrum? Uh, that's an excellent question. I don't know wh how to answer that. Um, I mean, if they're just therapists, I don't know that do they, they have a the yeah? Do they have like a college degree? Do they have a master's? Where where are they at on the spectrum of that? Oh, okay. Um, well, let's see. The the one is licensed clinical social worker, and the, that was my. Uh, case manager. And then I do have two therapists. Um, one is through the county here. Um, and my psychiatrist is actually through the county here. And uh, the case manager is through the county here. And then I have the one therapist who works in a different state, but he's really good. Um, both of them are at least college degrees. I'm not sure if they have advanced training beyond that, but they certainly have degrees in um, therapy or counseling, mental health counseling. Okay. So where's the doctorate level? That I'm not sure of for either of those two. Obviously, the psychiatrist definitely has a doctorate because you need that. Yeah. Um, on the two therapists, I would need to double check. And unfortunately, I don't know that right, you know, at this moment. Okay. So... I can find out, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So I guess what my question is, these uh, physician statements that were completed, um, obviously either they, I mean, did you submit them? Did the attorney submit them? Do you know if they're in the ERE? My, uh, the, we got, um, uh, I can't think of the name of it. Um, the re pa paperwork, I believe that is from the disability board basically is it the adult functioning sure. test? Is that what it would be called? Yeah. Okay. So we got something along that line and, um, I received one, my sister gave one, I guess one of my contacts and my therapist, I think received one and he wrote in a letter. Now I'm assuming that letter 
went to um, the disability board because I believe they're the ones who issued it. I've asked my lawyers if they would be interested in that, and I haven't really got a good reply to that. Um, and one thing I would mention in my first go round when I first applied, you know, no dis appeals or anything, I never actually had a hearing. So I have yet to ever have a hearing. So I, I really, other than listening to you, have no idea um, what what that would entail. And listening to you, I have a pretty good idea. But I don't even know if it applied to me at the first level or not. I was assuming, well, I'm not assuming anything. So, yeah, you would not have a hearing at the initial filing level. Where you would have a hearing would be after two denials going to the ALJ hearing level. So, okay. yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the basic thing that I foresee here is you know okay have you have you gone over with your attorney why they denied you like what was the reasoning for the denial uh they said that i didn't um maintain contact in time they they sent out some mailings to me they said that I, they wanted me to reply within two weeks or so give or take um i actually did reply like 12 days later and it's turned you know within the window within their two weeks and um heard nothing of course and then ultimately got a letter in the mail saying that i hadn't um sent them information in the fashion or in the time that they wanted me to so i actually called and told my lawyers this and this i didn't have them for the first filing i just picked them up a couple months back well when i started this disability appeal um so yeah i i, I lost my train of thought i apologize so you got a technical denial is what you're saying Yes, correct. Thank you. Okay, gotcha. So, okay. All right. So, I mean, this still may go through for medical approval at the recon level. Um, have you spoken with the DDS okay. rep as to the current standing of the claim or where things are at? Uh, I have not, but I did receive paperwork uh, about a month and a half ago that it had been ex assigned to one of their examiners or one of the people who follows up on the cases. I don't know their title. Okay, so, so you're going to be I going filed, to... I believe, in August. Yeah, so, I'm you, sorry, go ahead. so I'm you've sorry. got an expedited claim uh, situation where they're pushing it through. So, I mean, what I would say is this. I would find out specifically what they want, what they're missing, what they're not happy with, what they're you know, looking for, and then just get it to them. I mean, so have you filled out... I would contact... If the attorney's not doing it, I would contact the DDS rep. You have to be super careful, though, with what you say because you are destroying any barrier of protection you have by having the attorney be able to act as that intermediary. So you have to be super duper careful with, you know, and so the only question out of your mouth is what is the current status of my claim? What forms do you need for me going forward? When is my CEME appointment? Those are like the only things you should be asking the DDS rep. So what is the current status of my claim? What forms do you need? Uh, and what is the, well, at what, at what time will I have my CEME? because uh, kind of the bottom line with this situation is you really need to uh, just, you know, kind of know the basics and, you know, the attorney will go ahead and argue things, do stuff, et cetera. But you really just need to know the basics from them so that you don't miss anything going forward. Um, sure. Now with that said, since you're being in the very, very near future assigned a specific DDS rep or they've assigned one, um, do you have their yeah. extension number? I do not, but I do have their first initial and last name, um, and I believe I have their number, mm -hmm. like whatever their agent number would be, I believe. Okay, gotcha. Is so so give, give them a call, ask them specifically those three questions. Um, if they just got a sign, they're not going to have a really good grasp on the claim. Uh, ask them which medical facilities they have on file. Uh, go through them. If they're missing any, tell them which medical facilities you've been to. Do not get into okay. legalese with them. Do not try to spar legalese. You're just going to F it up. So just go ahead. Which yeah. medical facilities do you have? Which ones do you not have? And then what is current status? And uh, also, do you need any forms? And when is my MECE? Um, they're going to want to know if you're willing to go to... And have you already seen the SSA's doctors yet at, at this point or no? I, I never have. I, I wasn't required to the first go around, and I have not been asked to this go around. Okay, so you probably have technical denial before you actually were supposed to go. So your main goal is to get direction from your attorney on specifically what you should be saying in those MECE appointments, because otherwise you're going to get your butt bitten a little bit by not being prepared 
for what is kind of a very difficult situation. So, yeah. Yeah. And I know with my disabilities, it's all the more hard because my brain goes every which way and uh, you have anxiety and depression and PTSD on it. It, it, I'm not necessarily my best advocate and that's, that's harmful to me. Obviously. Yeah, sure. yeah. But, um, definitely. I have another oh, question. Oh, yeah, go, go for it. No, go for it. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask if it's possible. One of my therapists is willing to ha set up a conference call with you. He, and, and so he and I could talk to you for an hour and of course, pay your fee. Is that something you'd be amenable to do? Yeah. But what would go farther? Yeah. And I, I've done that before with doctors, um, therapists, individuals like that. Um, that, that's fine. But the main thing that you need from that therapist is an RFC letter that shows specifically limitations at, you know, marked levels that would be, you know, very helpful. Um, so have you completed an actual RFC with this person at this point yet or no? I don't believe so. I'm not even certain what RFC stands for, to be honest with you. Oh, residual functional capacity letter. Again, residual functional capacity okay. letter. Super duper ultra mega important. Okay, I'm writing this down. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds, from the title of it, it sounds... Uh, important. Very important. Sounds very important. I'm surprised I've not heard of it before. That's kind of frustrating to me. Shoot me, um, shoot me a, whatchamacallit, an email tomorrow. I'm going to be working with the homeless tomorrow. Okay. Or actually, shoot me an email on Thursday. Um, I'll send you a copy of the RFC we use. Uh, it's pretty detailed, okay. but we call it the mini RFC. Um, if they want to talk to me and call me, I cannot give them medical direction, but I can tell them about how the program works and what they're looking for, but I cannot give them medical direction. Yeah. Well, that, that in and of itself would be hugely helpful. And he's actually nice enough to set up a conference call. The reason for that is he has the ability, he can do that like a couple times a year and he can write it off as part of his business. So effectively he's helping me pay you as a lawyer fee. Yeah, um, sure. So that's why he would be involved, but he's also the one who's written a, a, a very positive letter in the sense of being negative about my, my abilities, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure. Um, so I know he, he, he'd be happy to talk to you and he'd probably have better formulated questions than I do and would be happy to pay for it, of course. So what we call those are private one hour seminars. That, that's what we call them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Private seminars. Okay. I would be happy to do that. Perfect. And, uh, and then you said send an email on Thursday. Yeah, shoot me an email on Thursday, and the reason why is that um, you know, when I work with the homeless, if I get back and I try to do some calls, I am beat to hell. Um, okay. Yeah, because I can imagine. Yeah, it's like literally twenty to thirty, you know, people that get lined up for me to go ahead and interact with them um, in a you know relatively short period of time, and so I just I really genuinely get beat to hell running between, and it's so many people that line up to meet with me, um, at the homeless location that I have to usually use three offices where I basically go in between oh, them wow. to complete all the things that I have to get done with them. Yeah. Wow. You're doing the Lord's work, brother. Yeah, indeed, indeed. But, uh, uh, excellent, good sir. I will catch you a little bit later. Um, you have a wonderful, wonderful night and a blessed night. And I will catch you a little bit later and uh, sleep well and uh, all the best to the next morning. And we'll go from there, you know? Yeah. Sounds terrific. I really appreciate your help on the phone. And I look forward to uh, setting up a one hour seminar with you. I appreciate it very much. Absolutely, good sir. Have a wonderful night. I'll catch you later. You too. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. So a super thank you to Batty Beth C for the $2 donation. I always appreciate that. Um, we're going to have some more videos about the rental home next door. Um, just to clarify, there was one thing I wanted to do with the rental home. I specifically did not do that with the rental home because everybody told me it was a bad idea. I wanted to paint the blue wall. Okay. And, uh, we're actually, that was, that was the last call. So I see the person there, um, calling in, just keep in mind, um, that, that was the last call from the night. I wanted to go ahead and paint the, the wall, the wood wall blue. Everybody said, don't you dare stain that wall with a blue wood stain. I did. It looked absolutely horrific, but then I took a lot of direction from a friend, watched how Ralph Lauren does basically really cool wall painting stuff. Looked at how Steinway does stuff. When it comes to painting their instruments and i think i've nailed the ultimate nautical look uh when it comes to basically uh the wall so with that said 
Uh, we're going to have a video specifically on that. But um, I'm really excited to show it to you because it's the only thing that I got to do with that house next door that was like a me thing. Um, everything else that I wanted to do was vetoed uh, and then basically shot down. So, uh, But to be fair, I did pick a lot of colors that were heinous, I think is the word. I think it's the proper word is heinous. So um, anyways, um, no, I didn't I didn't ruin the wood. I I. I I had to do some sanding. I had to do some sanding. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Roadrunner, thank you. Thank you for the 999 donation. That's absolutely amazing. I really appreciate it. Um, actually, I mean, I want to show you guys the wood, but the, the thing is this, I'm worried about somebody calling in as I show it to you. So I can show it to you really quickly. So um, this was the wood wall. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Uh, this was the wood wall. And then I wanted to create an, a, a nautical texture that I could still see through to the wood grain. So that, oh, you can't really see it. That, you can't really see it through that. I'll have to upload it later. But basically, it looks like, because remember, it's a, it's a beachy, islandy home. It looks like that. That's what it looks like. I, it, you can't see it through this. So I'll, I'll get you actual photos. It, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm really excited about it. Um, but the bottom line is, um, that right there took me three hours because it's a four-step process to get it to look like that. You have to use stains, paints, different paints, uh, spritzer bottles, uh, cotton rags, uh, a um, sponge, and a brush. It's a whole involved process, but um, I think I've got it at this point. So with that said, thank you, thank you. Uh, Ivy, thank you for the $1.99 donation. Um, I really appreciate that, that's awesome. Uh, that was the third super on the live stream, which is very cool. So um, I'm not going to be taking any more calls tonight. I'm just doing 45 minutes. We're at 46 minutes. I will be taking more calls on Thursday. But remember, I got to go work with the homeless. I got to basically, I got to fall asleep. I got to wake up and I got to do all that jazz. So and remember, when I wake up in the morning, um, I just, it's harder for me. Every, every week, it gets harder for me to wake up uh, in the morning and basically go ahead and get to that office super early, even though I'm always late. Um, uh, but the last time I was late, the Prius broke because the battery died. And, and then, and then when we went to go replace the battery, both damn batteries died, the 12 volt battery and then the actual hybrid system battery. But th there's this company called green bean battery. I bought the $2,000 lifetime warranty from them for the hybrid battery. They came right out, replaced that thing, man, I am good to go. So, um, I see a question here. Can you retire at 62 and still get money from your rental property? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. No, no limitation. You just, if you have income over a certain amount, they may tax you, uh, some of those benefits. So Batty Beth, thank you again for the $2 donation. That's awesome. That's a double donation right there. That's very, very cool. Absolutely. Um, let's see while waiting for, uh, to be approved. Can I sell my belongings on marketplace and eBay? Yeah, but keep in mind, the problem with selling items is that it kind of is looked at as income. So I'm not going to say what most people do, but I'm just letting you know that is a potential problem with that situation. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay, I will catch you guys a little bit later. Please remember to like and subscribe. And also, if you get a chance, go to Google and type in Disability Resolution Law Firm, Disability Resolution Florida, and leave some stars. With that said, if you needed more than five to seven minutes for an answer, just go ahead and do the 250 per hour. I usually during my Eastern Standard Time, uh, 12 noon, like you know, middle of the day lunch period. That's when I do my my uh, my you know 250 per hour you know private sessions. Um, they fill up, so you might get one this week. You might get most likely next week. But bottom line is, you always have that option for a private hour. I will catch you guys a little bit later. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. I see one more question from Doom Pigeon. What's the fastest approval for SS or SSTI? A person can get it if they have a fast track injury. The fastest I've ever done was 48 hours, then followed by two weeks. Um, but they don't really do that anymore because they just don't have the staff for it. Uh, and would, would they send the money? If they were to send the money, usually if it's super expedited, you get the money within a week to two weeks. If it's not super expedited, you're usually seeing it in three to four weeks. All right. I'll catch you guys later. Have a wonderful night. And we will go from there. Thank you so much. And, uh, have, have as much fun as you can. It is, I believe Thursday tomorrow. No, it's Wednesday tomorrow. So we'll go from there. All right. Catch you later. Have fun. Bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye.